Simplified Chaos, Episode 101. Life is beautiful and full of chaos. And it can get slightly out of hand if that shit's not tamed. We're here to share how to simplify the little things to help you lead a more intentional life. This is Simplified Chaos. Hey, hey, wonderful friends. Welcome to Simplify Chaos. This is Jillian, one of your hosts, and with my co-host and ruggedly handsome husband, Nicholas. I am feeling kind of rugged today. What's going on, folks? (laughs) How y'all doing? Hope y'all are having a wonderful week. We've got another great episode here for you today. Jilly, what are we talking about? Why we're definitely, definitely okay not buying... A shit ton of gifts for our kid for Christmas. Yeah, we've um, we've had some episodes on gift giving in the past, and our daughter is two and a half years old. This will be her third Christmas, but still not one of those Christmases where she's going to look back and be like, ah, can't believe all this great stuff I got. So Jill and I have made some conscious decisions, some intentional decisions and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes but before we dive into that as always we love to show a little gratitude so Jilly, what are you grateful for this fine week i am grateful for um emulsifiers 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 if what's you that if you don't know what that is that is that long skinny tool that has a little blender at the end that oh you, yeah a lot of times you stick in pots to like mix up soups Um, Which I used to use in the past. Like, I just used it to, like, puree soups, pretty much. And uh, then I had this great idea. I was, like, looking online for, like, fancy, expensive as hell blenders to just do more frothy drinks at home. Just to make it more cozy at home. Just because we're not going out as much. And then I was just thinking, like, I think I can just stick an emulsifier in my half and half and froth the hell out of it, and it's going to be fine. Like, I don't need some fancy contraption to make my milk frothy. Um, So I'm guessing it worked? It did, and it's been fantastic because it's super easy to clean. I don't have to, like, take out all the blades and stuff and have this long drying process. It's, like, quickly run under the water, a little soap, and then let it air dry, and it's done. So I am super grateful for my emulsifier that is, like, like at least 10 years old because I inherited from my mom that has been making my at least one drink a day a little bit cozier and frothier for myself. So how is your froth as compared to that other thing that you used to use? Um, so I used to have, it was like a ble- a small mini latte mixer, but it really wasn't that strong and powerful. Like it worked really well for like the first month and then like as the battery dies it's just like super weak so i'm pretty sure i'm gonna just throw that out yeah it was like a latte it was called a latte something and it just it worked well in the beginning and then now it's just kind of like every time i put a fresh battery in it it works and then it just dies very quickly um so i'm probably gonna put that in the garbage and before that i was using that really big food processor Mm -hmm. to like make like my green tea lattes and it worked but it was just it's a lot of pieces to clean up. To clean up, yeah. It's bulky. You know, I don't mind getting it out and doing it when I when I have to, but it it was just a lot of parts and very dangerous parts to have out, mm-hmm. especially with having two kids running around. Yeah. So I prefer the emulsifier. Look at you repurposing things. Yeah. Nice work, Jilly. Thank you so much. What about you? What are you grateful for? Things that have very easy assembly. Why? Because it's easy to assemble. (laughs) Duh. So, no, there's... I like when things are shipped to you and it's just the instructions are easy. Mm. But more importantly, if you didn't have instructions, it would still be easy to assemble. And I think this also kind of ties into today's topic. But we got Lucille a balance bike. She's outgrown her radio flyer tricycle. Radio flyer, so vintage. So she will (laughs) hand that off to her cousin, and he will now ride the uh, the tricycle. Although he's probably going to outgrow it very shortly as well, since he is almost the same height as Lucille. He's gigantic. He's a giant baby. He is like ninety eighth percentile (laughs) height, ninety eighth percentile weight. Um, Kid's going to be a hoss. 
his feet are I hope like, he's an athlete. He's like got the genetics for the it. The fattest, chunky feet I've most I've ever seen. Like sh- regular shoes don't work. <laughs> yeah. You just yeah, have to put it's crazy. socks on him. <laughs> but the bike that, you know, obviously didn't come fully assembled, ordered it from Amazon and it was just very easy to, to put together. It was one of those things where I can escape for five minutes and put it together. And we decided, and this is going to kind of tie into our topic today, we decided that instead of giving it to Lucille on Christmas Day, that we were going to give it to her today. Yeah. And she looked at it. I brought it into her room as you were playing with her. And she's like, Bike! Like, thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. And I, I was just know. like, you know, didn't even have to say anything. Like, that was just her honest reaction. And I don't know. There was just, there's something special about doing that when you want to do that, as opposed to picking a day and just saying, here's all these things. All at once. All at once. Mm-hmm. You know, let's let's spread it out. You know, it's it's and it's not that we're not getting her anything. Mm-hmm. It's just like we're choosing to do things a little bit differently this year. So I don't know how you wanted to kick it off, but I thought felt that this kind of just tied into today's topic. Yeah, and it's it's kind of funny. Um, we're learning about different traditions right now since I'm a third grade teacher. We were talking about Kwanzaa, and I honestly didn't know that much about Kwanzaa, but we were watching a video about it with the kids today, and I really resonated with just. So there's candles that they light, and each time they light a candle, they talk about a principle that they think is important to life. Ooh, I like that. Which I thought was really cool, like some kind of lesson that they think is important for their kids to know. And they do very small gifts that relate to family, or it could be a book, and they spread it out, you know, over, I think it's over seven days. And there's just something about that alignment and focus that I really resonated with, with just there being a bigger meaning behind the holiday instead of just having one day that just seems like it's all about consumerism. More gifts, the better. The better parent you are, the more there's under a tree or the more there's stuffed in their stocking. And I'm just like so fucking over it because it Mm -hmm. just, it doesn't resonate with me. Um, When I think about my memories of Christmas, I always related to presents. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like anytime I got excited, it was because I kept thinking about all the gifts I was going to get. I I rarely would think about family and it sucks saying that now out loud, but it's true. Like I would get really excited about the gifts and that was it. And I don't want that for Lucille. I mean, Lucille can choose what she wants to, how she wants to celebrate when she's older. But as far as I'm concerned, I want to show her that we value Christmas as family. We value mm-hmm. it as just having fun and is in a great, just having experiences together and not about stuff because that's what I remember. Like that right. is the biggest excitement. And I want excitement. I want her excitement to be for other things and not just the stuff. Well, and you're right. I mean, the holidays in itself, you know, you pick a holiday anymore, like Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter and all that stuff. I mean, it's be- become totally consumerized and, You know, you're just, all this stuff is being flashed in your face. And when it comes to like TV shows and commercials and stuff like that, they make you feel like a bad parent if you don't give your kids like everything under the sun. Like they really kind of shame you. And and it's all part of the whole corporate consumerism and whatnot. It's just like, you know, we want you to spend money. And the way our country is right now, it's just like spend, spend, spend. You know, there's no there's nothing about like saving your money and, and, you know, Mm -hmm. just spending the things that you can afford rather than, you know, putting yourself in, in, in massive amount of debts for the holidays. I know the holidays are like one of the, the biggest causes of debt, you know, for, for a lot of families. And it's because, and I feel like it's, you know, you want to give your kids, you know, everything that they want. Um, but you know, just over the past two years, two and a half years with Lucille, it's just like, she's pretty happy with what she has and she finds creative ways to use the things that the toys that she has and even not even toys, but just like things around the house. It could be wooden spatulas or something like that. And she's going to find a way to, to make it interesting. So, you know, I I want parents to feel like, you know, you're not going to be judged upon as being a bad parent if you don't get your kids gifts, you know, and I'm not saying that you don't have to get them anything, but like you don't have to get them everything either and you're and you're not a bad parent if you don't give them everything but yeah i mean it's for for us we don't we we do want to instill the value of family and and getting together for the holidays and 
you know, we're lucky that, you know, our family's here pretty close to us and it's pretty easy to see them. And, you know, we just went to my parents' house last week and my mom got a chance to do a bunch of crafts with, with Lucille. And one of them was putting together a gingerbread house with her. And that's what I want her to remember. I want her to remember those fun activities that, that she does with her Mimi and Pop Up or with Gammy and Gampy. Like those are the things that we really want to instill. And even as she gets older, just kind of like giving back and, and you know, maybe working in, in some kind of charitable fashion so that, you know, we're all working together and, and helping those who might be less fortunate than us as well. I think that's what it's all about too. So there's a lot of different ways that we can, you know, slice and dice this, but I think we've we've made a decision that we don't want to just pile everything all at once and say, here you go, because then it's going to be expected every year. And I think expectations continue to grow year over year as a kid. I remember that too. It's just like, you know, what are we getting this year? And, you know, how much more money are parents going to spend or Santa Claus is going to, you know, bring us and stuff and whatnot. Yeah. And my mom, I may have mentioned this before, but she talked about the overwhelming stress of Christmas. Oh my goodness. She had Excel spreadsheets writing down everything we got in her stocking stuff for every year. So she wouldn't repeat it. And like my neck immediately just started feeling heavy. Like I was like feeling the stress in my neck, having her just talk about that. I was like, how the hell did you keep Mm -hmm. up with that? And she just felt like she had to top every year and it couldn't repeat itself. And I was just like blown away because I had no idea like mom did that. And now that we're doing the gift of experiences and Mm -hmm. just presence, you know, not that presence, but just the presence of us instead of like physical gifts. Like she just keeps saying like how much happier she is, how less stressed she is. Mm -hmm. And she can just freaking relax and enjoy our time together instead of worrying about like what's going to go in your stockings. Like I have to put stuff in your stockings. And it's funny listening to conversations from some friends and, you know, their conversations are more like, I pick this up to put in the stocking instead of I pick this up because I think my child would really value this or would really enjoy it. It's, I think the language is, if you listen to the language, it's completely all about stuffing an object in something mm-hmm. or putting something under the tree instead of, I think this is going to bring a lot of value to my kid or I think this is going to be might make my husband really happy with his whatever. Like, I can see the meaning of the gifts slowly slipping because we're putting it more in quantity versus the quantity. I Mm -hmm. mean, sorry, quantity versus quality. Quality. And it just, I I don't know. I see Christmas in such a different light now. And I know we're learning every year what we want as a family for Christmas. And I know you kind of alluded to like, we were only doing this because she was young and she wasn't going to remember, but I think we're in this for the long haul. Like we're not, we're not doing this just because she's not going to remember what she gets. It's, this is what, we value and i think if we don't keep our the holidays we celebrate aligned to what we value then it's like it's purposeless like why even have values if we're totally not going with Mm -hmm. that i just feel like it just it's really feels unaligned to do that and not authentic like to us yeah so for me it's like christmas is about the gift of family and the gift of fun and if it it's not about the stuff i mean like family's not in our stuff um i I mean, I feel like love is the best gift we could ever give Lucille, and love isn't in stuff either. It's it's in experiences. It's in, you know, time together and giving her our attention. So I think that is what we are truly, you know, focused on, and that makes that makes it really, really okay with not buying shit for her and being yeah. okay expressing that and just vocalizing that. Yeah, and and you know, a couple of years ago, we, you and I for the most part, have always been like, you know, let's save our money for an experience and whatnot. And, and we started doing that with our families as well. And, and, you know, they've really bought into that. And, you know, it, it kind of sucks because this past Christmas, you know, last year in 2019, we had a couple of really cool experiences lined up, you know, that for were going to happen in 2020. And then obviously the, the pandemic hit. I think like for my parents, we were um, gonna do them, you know, do a ferry ride from Lewis Beach to Cape May, and we offered to dog sit for them so that they can have a night out there. And then, you know, with my brother and his wife, we usually do a hockey game down in in DC. We watch a Caps game, but this year we were gonna go baller and, and get some really good seats for an Orioles game this year and try to switch it up. And and obviously, the pandemic 
had other plans and we're not really sure what the future is going to lie even in 2021 just because you know this is an ongoing event so this year is is going to be a little bit different and I'm not saying that this goes against our values but you know I'm doing something more tangible with them this year just because we didn't get the opportunity to have those events last year and I know that we're going to have the opportunity you know somewhere in the future but we just don't know so this year you know I'm thinking of things that they will get a lot of use out of that they've expressed joy in and they're consumable and they're consumable and so you know it's, it, it'll be fun this year it'll be a little bit different than what we normally do and, yeah. and obviously we're adjusting with the times you know we would love to have, have planned some kind of experience with, with them but that's just probably not in the cards this year which is totally fine but you know we'll we'll get back to our values on that as well you know hopefully uh the next go around but yeah i mean it's also being flexible and, and, you know, dealing with the situation in hand, too. So and that's been part of our, our process this year. Yeah. And I think it still kind of aligns it to our values because I'm all about consumable gifts, like the gift of like a gift card for coffee or, mm-hmm. you know, something that I th- that I know that they're going to be using. And it's not just going to sit there and collect us and be something they have to stress about. Like, should I keep it if I don't yeah. like it or you know what I mean? So I think it's definitely still you know, aligned, but it, you're right. It's, it's definitely, there are some more tangible gifts than there have ever been, but we're very intentional about that as well, which I'm, I'm grateful for that conversation we have when we do decide to change up something, which I love that we're flexible with that yeah. because times are different and we had to adjust and feel what was best for, you know, how we wanted to give to mm-hmm. family and friends. Um, but then I just thought about like Christmas to me growing up was all about binging presents. It was all about like unwrapping as many presents as I could. Like there wasn't a lot of time in between gifts. I don't know why your Christmas was, but it was just like we were done probably in like 10 minutes unwrapping gifts. It was just like one after the other after mm-hmm. the other. And I don't want Lucille to feel like I don't want her binging on the things that don't matter to us during Christmas. I want her to binge on the things that do matter to us. So I want her to binge family time. I want Mm -hmm. her to binge time outside or an experience. So I think about that also, like what we, what we binged on Christmas day and Christmas Eve and how I want to change that with, you know, the way we bring her up and what I actually want to binge now. I'm like, this is what I value now. I value time together and, or really good food or really good drinks. And, and, you know, I just want to make sure that as she grows older, that she knows for sure, like that, that memory, that experience of Christmas. And then she has the choice to, you know, change that if she wants to. But sure. But yeah, I think us being role models, you know, for her as, as her parents and, and doing things the way we want to do them, that's going to seem normal to her. It's not going to seem out there in left field. It's what we feel is, is, is best for, you know, our family and, and what our family values. And we want her to learn that. So, you know, that, that's, you know, what, what we'll do. But obviously, as she gets older, you know, we'll listen to her too and listen to her feedback and opinions. But, you know, again, <laughs> we will ultimately just kind of lead her in that direction that, you know, this is a time for us to all be together and just, you know, cherish this time that we have and to give back, you know, when we can give back and, and help others who, you know, might need, you know, just a little bit of help during these times. But yeah, I mean, we really just want her to to understand that, you know, it's it's all about us and, and, and us being together. Yeah, I mean, bottom line to simplify it, Christmas is all about family, love and fun. That's really what it comes down to. And if it doesn't relate to that, then why complicate it? Why complicate mm-hmm. it with more shit, more stuff? Like that has nothing to do with with what we value. So I agree, like, just keep it simple. If it doesn't align with being with family or if it's something that's fun together that we can experience or has to do with, you know, ways we can love on each other, then yeah, it's out of here. Yeah, and I love that, you know, our, our family, our extended families have all embraced this and, you know, really appreciate what we're trying to do and 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 are just great about it you know i i look forward to this holiday every year and just being able to be with everybody you know when my parents moved to delaware it's we used to be able to see them every week um but you know now we see them you know once a month maybe once every other month and it it makes you really value these holidays a little bit more and and that's what i want lucille to remember is that you know this is a special time we get to spend with mimi and papa with aunt amy uncle scott and all that good stuff. So she's uh, 
she's already had a really good season so far and and, and it's only going to get better um you know come hell or high water we're, we're making this thing happen next week yes <laughs> coronavirus <laughs> um yeah, I think as long as we're showing Lucille that we choose people over stuff, we choose people over things, I think she's going to absorb that message very well. Um, and like you said, uh, our family and friends have been very adaptive and responsive to the way we are, we choose to celebrate things. And we do not tell our parents like how to celebrate. Like We let them give, we mm-hmm. let them do whatever they want. And I've noticed it's becoming less and less stuff because I think they're realizing, you know, that we don't need it and we don't want it. So they've been gifting more experiences and, you know, gifting more time together, which I'm so yeah. grateful for. I love hanging out with your parents and your brother. So I'm really excited the transition that Christmas has had over the years. Yeah. I'm really upset that we didn't able to, we weren't able to use the uh, experience that we were, that my parents got for Lucille, which was a, a year membership for the Baltimore Aquarium. Man, like we got, yeah, we, one we, run, did, we got one run in and Lucille loved it. I, I think like she was still kind of in that stage where it's like, eh, but like now I think she would absolutely love it. Um, as she's, you know, gotten a little bit older and, um, you know, is just more aware of what's going on and whatnot. So, you know, that was, that was an amazing gift. I, I hope, you know, we get it extended a little bit, but, um, yeah, those are the things that we cherish. And, and, you know, I, I love that they consult with us and say, you know, I'm thinking about doing this and I'm like, yeah, she would absolutely love that, you know? So, um, it's been awesome and, and we can't thank them enough for, you know, just supporting us and, in, in how we're going about, uh, you know, the holidays. Absolutely. And I think, It's something to say again, the whole spreading the gifts out. If you are a family who has gifts for your kids and you're trying to simplify it, there is something about giving one gift a day that just truly puts the focus and the meaning. If it's something really special that that kid gets to enjoy and absorb it, just that one thing instead Mm -hmm. of going from one thing to the next thing. And I'm really excited. I think my mom was kind of like taken back when I was like, I think we're going to give her the bike like tomorrow. And she's like, what? Don't you want to see her face? And I'm like, we're going to see her face face and give it to her today. It was worth it. And um, every second, you know, my mom has something big planned for her, um, something for her to climb on at the house. (laughs) And that means all the emphasis gets to be put on that. And Lucille is going to absorb that and just appreciate that one at a time. And that's how, you know, we want to live our life too. We don't want it to be fast paced, busy, one thing after the next. It's like we want to be able to take our time, have that slow paced journey of enjoying it and just soaking it in for all for all we can. And I think that's something to say about enjoying Christmas too, is just like taking, spreading out your gifts if you really want your child to absorb it and find meaning in it and really appreciate it. Um, I think it makes it more exciting for the giver as well. It was it's really fun seeing someone enjoy the gift you give instead of going from mm-hmm. one thing to the next and then throwing it to the side because oh, there's yeah. something else that's more exciting that has their attention. So I really, I like doing that. And I definitely want to keep that up the whole, um, if we do want to do more gifts for yeah. Christmas or just maybe doing a couple more if that's what we decide and then just sprinkle spreading it spreading it out. I love that. I really do. Yeah. No, spreading I, it. I agree with that. All right. Anything else? No. Any more dimes to drop? No, no dimes here. All There's right. a coin shortage, honey. Uh, that's what I've heard. I think it's false. <laughs> but how about some resources for our listeners? Yes. Um, I found a blog post by womansday.com. Health, fitness, and wellness. Oh, yeah. Um, so this title was 31 Tips for a Stress-Free Christmas. I am definitely not reading all 31. <laughs> I, You're going to drink your top five? I skimmed the pool and found top four. Okay. All right. Number one, seek a fresh perspective. Make a change. Take one task that drives you crazy during the holidays Mm -hmm. and tackle it in a new way. A fresh approach just might make a difference. Um, For example, like we haven't done holiday cards in a couple years now because it's just it's felt like overwhelming to do them. I'm not going to lie. So I've honestly just relied on either Instagram or Facebook to just put out a message of that i love you hey family or i see them in person at parties and just say hey happy holidays in person so i think we've definitely taken a different approach to certain tasks that were always a little daunting or just not as needed as 
we don't have as, as much space and time to put the energy into it to do it how we want. So I will say that just seeking a fresh perspective as in gift giving, like spreading out the gifts, I think has really um, lightened the load as far as celebrating Christmas for us. Yeah, no, it's been it's been fun doing it this way this year. And, and you know, it's made things, I think, a lot less stressful. So I agree with that. Cool. All right. The other tip I had is be satisfied with, quote unquote, good enough. Don't always go for bigger and better. When planning your holiday, make it small and simple. Um, for an example, our tree. <laughs> our tree our is fair a, tree. It's a small little tree, but it makes us really happy. It's not super overwhelming to put in the car and take Mm-mm. home. You know, it doesn't take a long time to decorate. Um, you know, and our decorations too. We we really keep it simple. I think our Christmas decorations all fit inside three boxes total. All of yeah. our Christmas decor. And, and one box is basically the garland that goes up the stairs. And that's, you know, a little bulky. So that, yeah. that takes up one box. And then we have like a box full of ornaments and stockings. And then the rest of it is just lights and candles. Yeah. And again, that's good enough for yeah. us. And that's what makes us happy right now and brings us joy. It may change later, but I think just sticking yeah, oh, yeah. to, you know, what we think is good enough for our family, not comparing ourselves to anyone else is like way less overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, when when Lucille's ready to to start helping out with some of the uh, the decorating, then then we'll 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 do some considerations with the outdoor illumination. Great illumination. <laughs> but for now, I'm going to enjoy my peace. <laughs> um, the other tip that I thought was cool was throw away your shopping list. Forgo the stress of shopping for family members in favor of sharing special moments and experiences. Instead of having a package to rip open, we have this wonderful day together. So just taking it, I think we've been preaching this, just presence over presence. Yeah. People presence over gift presence. (laughs) And the last tip that I thought we should mention is just to focus on what's important. That massive pile of holiday cards, all the decorations, stocking stuffers, gifts, really truly refocus on what's most important to you. And again, it's very easy to get carried away with all of the traditions of things that we think we should do instead of the traditions we want to do. Right. So just really yeah, focusing you, on that. You have the ability to set your own traditions. You don't have to do what everybody else is doing. Oh, show. Sure. Yeah. And that was it. Awesome. How about that quote of the day then there? Oh, okay. <laughs> this quote, it was anonymous. Hip hop anonymous. My children may not get everything they want but they have parents that love them more than anything. Wise words from Hip Hop Anonymous. Hip Hop Anonymous. (laughs) And your take action challenge is? Just to do Christmas on your own terms. Do your holidays on your own terms, whatever that is. Celebrate it the way it makes the most sense and value to you. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Love it. All right, folks. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode. If you like this episode, please do us a favor and help us spread the message. You can do this by writing a review or simply by sharing this episode with a friend. And remember, sharing sparks a conversation. Conversation leads to action. And action is how we're able to live a happy and intentional as hell lifestyle. We want to thank you all for listening today. And we will see you again next week. See you later, y'all.